Hello, everyone. Welcome to the St. Ignatius Preparatory School Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, though, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. We have one more session tonight. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded, and that recording will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Ignatius. And now I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our presenters, starting first with Arupe College of Loyola University, Chicago. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Isabel Reyes. I am the Associate Director of Admission at Arupe College. Uh, just give me a couple of seconds while I set up my presentation now. Um, if you haven't heard about Arupe College in the past, um, we are a two-year institution uh, that is part of Loyola University Chicago. We're only about six years old. Uh, Loyola University is about 150 years old. Um, we are located at Loyola's Water Tower campus. And our students um, are two year students that uh, start with us taking their general education courses and then move on to Loyola University, Chicago, or to other four year institutions of their choice. I'll be taking you through a few of our slides um, in order to um, explain our program a little bit more. As an institution that is part of Loyola University, Chicago, um, and for students that are part of St. Ignatius, you know that we are um, big uh, folks that really believe in the mission of social justice and care for the whole person. We have a, a supportive community of educators and learners um, here at Arupe College. It's, a, it's actually a pretty smaller institution, uh, smaller than Loyola University. Loyola has about 17,000 students and our program itself has a little over 300 students. We use a cohort model where students will be taking classes either during the morning or the afternoon, which allows for you to have a more balanced work and school schedule if you decide to work or to take an internship program while you're at Arupe College. All students at Arupe College are receive um, their Loyola ID. You receive um, access to all of the Loyola resources, um, anything from libraries, to the tutoring services, our recreation centers located at both the Water Tower campus and the Lakeshore campus. And you can also join over 200 different uh, student organizations or intramural sports programs um, through Loyola University or through Abu Bay College as well. I mentioned we're located at Loyola University's Water Tower campus. It's conveniently located right off of the Chicago and State Street Red Line stop. It's really, really easy to get there from any point in the city. Um, we are recruiting students from the Chicagoland area. And so for any student, it's very easy and accessible via public transportation. Both our campus at the Water Tower and also at the Lakeshore and, um, and the third, I should say, the Maywood campus are all connected through our Loyola shuttle bus. Um, students can ride any time between 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. So all of our three campuses are, are also connected. What I always like to tell students, um, what I love about being at the Water Tower campus is that you're in the middle of the city. It's a really busy business district. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities for students to take advantage of different internship programs or um, also um, you know, either work opportunities that you can find either on campus or off campus through work study positions. Um, you're seeing on the slide a couple of uh, internship partnerships that we have with Lurie Children's Hospital for any students that are interested in our health uh, programs or um, for our business programs with Deloitte and Grant Thornton, which are also located downtown. The single most important reason why students decide to attend a Rupe College is because of our affordability. Tuition and fees for this current year are just a little under $14,000. This covers um, a student's transportation. It also covers a free laptop and a free meal program that are also included um, in, in your package. Most students that are attending Garupe College will pay um, most of their, their uh, tuition and fees through their FAFSA application. Um, most students in, in their senior year will be completing their FAFSA and receiving grants in order to help you pay for your tuition and fees. Majority of our students at Arupe Bay College graduate with no debt at all or very little debt. Only about 26% of our students have to take a student loan. In terms of our curriculum, students will be taking mainly your general education core classes. Um, these are the foundational classes that most students will have to take in college um, at any university. Um, and these are all transferable to over 100 different universities throughout the state of Illinois. You'll also take a Rupe core curriculum courses, which are also the foundation of our mission-based courses in theology, ethics, and philosophy. 
And then you'll also um, take classes within one of the, your, your choice for your associate degree, whether it's arts and humanities, business or social and behavioral sciences. Um, there's also a variety of different majors that you can pursue after you attend a Rupe College. Some are listed here. I do wanna point you to our pre-education and our pre-nursing program, which are a little different than everything else that's on the slide simply because they are a dual admission program into Loyola University. You'll take your first two years at a Rupe College and then move into the School of Education or to the Marcella Niehoff School of Nursing. Your schedule is also really balanced. Um, and as students that are in high school, you have a, a really great structure in high school. That's something that not all students have in college all of the time if your classes aren't always back to back. Our students take four classes during the fall, four in the spring and two in the summer. Um, I love to tell students all the time that I, uh, one of the favorite things that students uh, love about a Rupe College is that they get Wednesdays off, which is right in the middle of the week, gives you the opportunity to catch up on homework, um, either attend different campus events or maybe even work um, on that day. This is a quick um, just class profile of our students that are joining a Rupe College. Um, this is from our, our current year. The average GPA is a 2.9 weighted GPA. Um, average ACT and SAT scores are listed here. However, we are a test optional um, school. The only program for which we do request um, your test scores will be for our pre-nursing program. Um, and we are looking for a 1050 SAT or um, a 21 on the ACT composite score. Just a little bit on our outcomes. So in terms of our students that are matriculating into four-year institutions, 89% of those students are matriculating and uh, succeeding in their four-year institution. Where are these institutions? All over the country. Um, some are in Chicago. Um, we also have a great partnership through Loyola University's Continuum Scholarship Program, where you can continue your next two years at Arupe College. Um, I'm gonna skip through a couple of these slides and then just show you my contact information, which I'll be sharing um, towards the end of the presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you so much to Arupe College. And next up we have Southern Illinois University. Good evening, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Uh, give me one second as I share my screen with you all. All right, so my name is Jonathan Vadesija. I'm a regional uh, admissions representative for SIU Carbondale. Um, I'll pretty much be the main point of contact if you find yourself interested in SIU moving forward, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So before I talk about the university itself, I would always like to talk about where we're located. So for most of you that don't know, SIU is a four-year public state university. Uh, we're about five hours and 20 minutes from Chicago. We're actually located in the city of Carbondale, which is located in Southern Illinois. So Carbondale, I promise you, is not surrounded by cornfields. Um, it's actually in the heart of a national park. So you're gonna see a lot of lakes, rivers, a lot of beautiful outdoor scenery. The city itself has about 25,000 people. So it's not the biggest city, it's not the smallest. It's just kind of like a rural uh, town or what some would call a college town and has a natural aesthetic towards uh, creativity. So a lot of music, a lot of art, um, you know, a lot of performing arts, that's kind of like the natural vibe of Carbondale. And it's very, very close knit with the university itself. Now SIU, like I mentioned, a four year public state university. Uh, we're a medium sized school close to about 12,000 students now uh, with the class of 2021 that just started about a year ago. Um, so again, we're not the biggest, we're not the smallest. I think we're really, really good balance right there in the middle. I would say that our emphasis is really on um, research, right? But we have over 200 majors. So you can literally major in tons of different things, but we offer students who are interested in research the opportunities to be able to get in and do some hands-on with the professors working directly with them and they are part-time paid positions. So we have that in the sciences, we have that in business, you know, automotive, aviation, but again, 200 majors. If you're interested in double majoring, minoring, we definitely, definitely allow and encourage our students to be able to do so. Now, since we are out of the city, right, out of Chicago or Chicagoland proper, um, I always like to talk about, well, if you were to attend SIU or even if you want to visit, how does that work? How do you get down there, right? So the opportunities that we offer our students for transportation are first and foremost, as a, fresh, as a freshman, you'll be able to bring your car. You also can catch the Amtrak, which is in downtown Canal Street, all the way down to Carbondale, and it'll drop you off literally in downtown Carbondale. So again, you can use uh, your personal car, you can use the train, and there's even charter buses. Once you're in town, 
You'll have access to a mass transit system to get you all over the city of Carbondale within the dorms. We have multiple campuses within the city. And obviously, again, if you want, you can always utilize your bikes. Um, I mean, utilize your cars. And it's really easy to navigate the city and the campus via bicycle as well. Um, since we are a campus that's a little bit farther from the city, freshmen um, do have to stay on campus the first year. It is mandatory, right? So your first year is the only year you actually have to stay on campus. If you do decide to stay on campus, the rooms are fully furnished, obviously Wi-Fi, cable, AC and heated, all the utilities, and you have access to an unlimited meal plan. And we have suite mate style, right? So you only share the bathroom literally one, one other room. You don't have to share the bathroom with like 30 other people or anything like that. All of our rooms are going to be suite mate style. Um, if you're interested in sports or are, are a fan of sports, we are also Division One, As you can see here, we're the Salukis. That's our mascot. If you ever get on campus, you'll hear a lot of gold dogs. You know, we bleed maroon. I'm wearing my uh, maroon um, shirt here today. But if you're interested in sports or are a fan, you know, we are Division I um, in 15 divisions. We're very competitive and we're really big when it comes to school spirit. Now, outside of all the majors that we offer and do, uh, if I didn't um, say this before, we do offer internships, externships, co-ops, right? We have on-campus job, the mirror jobs that are going to be similar to the ones you're going to be doing once you graduate. But outside of that, we also do offer tons of opportunities for you to get involved, right? So many extracurricular activities, over 300 clubs, and you can see all the different criteria that we have here when it comes to those clubs. We want our students to explore beyond just their intended major and to be able to discover some other things that maybe they are aware of, or maybe they want to learn a little bit more about while they're at, while they're at their time at SIU. Um, we're also really big in supporting our students. So as you can see here, study abroad um, is a big part of the SIU experience, 44 programs in 57 different countries. Obviously with the pandemic, it's a little grounded as of right now, but it was a really, really big part and we're hoping to bring this back. If you're interested in the honors program, we do have an honors program as well, um, Career Development Center. So uh, this is the place you go to bridge the gap between being an undergrad and becoming a professional, right? So practicing your interviewing, interviewing skills, uh, finding internships, externships, job placement, that's gonna be the place where you're gonna get that. And then we also have our Student Multicultural Resource Center. Uh, we understand that students come from all walks of life and we, as an institution feel that um, access and inclusivity is a huge, huge part of a student's success. So we have a student multicultural resource center, um, depending on you know, whether it's your uh, cultural background or whatever uh, it may be, we have different centers to accommodate your special needs. Included in that is the first generation center and also disability support services, okay? Um, now, when it comes to scholarships, which obviously is a huge component of, you know, just the college decision-making process, we've made the process very streamlined. So as you can see, it's most of our scholarships are gonna be GPA-based, right? The higher your GPA is, the more money you will essentially be able to get. And if you have a 3.8 GPA, we'll put you around that full ride opportunity um, that, that we offer for our students. So I'll go ahead and hurry up a little bit here. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, again, I'm the Chicago guy for SIU. Email me, text me, whatever the case may be. And I look forward to working with you all and thank you for your time. All right, thank you so much to Southern Illinois University. And next up we have University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Keena Griffin. I'm an assistant director of admissions with the University of Illinois. Um, and so today I wanna to talk to you about what we call the power of I, which is all the ways that we feel the University of Illinois can help you harness your own power and become the person that you're supposed to be. Now, first and foremost, I wanna talk about how we can do that with our student body. We consider it a family. Now, it's no secret that Illinois is the largest school in the entire state. We have about 34,000 undergraduate students on our campus, and our total campus population actually hovers just over 51,000. Now, although we offer a huge number of students, you're never going to feel lost on our campus. We have over 30 support centers, and we have all different kinds of ways to make you feel a part of the community and a part of the family. Now, we are also one of the most diverse schools, not only in the Midwest, but also in the Big Ten. We pride ourselves on the different kinds of diversity that we have on our campus. And that's because we know our students legitimately come from everywhere across the globe. You can see that every state in America is represented and 113 countries globally are or do have students on our campus. Now, in addition to that family feel that you're gonna get, you also are gonna receive a top tier education. 
We are the number 15 public university in the entire country, and that's according to US News and World Report. And throughout our history, we've been focused on bringing new and better solutions to the world. So you can see that we genuinely have an impact. There have been 23 Nobel Prize winners and 26 Pulitzer Prize winners that have walked our campus at some point, either as faculty or as a student. And because of the ways that we prepare you inside and outside of the classroom, we offer the number one return on investment in the entire Big Ten. Now, in terms of academics and the education that you're gonna receive, we offer more than 150 different programs and majors on our campus. They are sectioned off into 11 different communities that we call colleges. You can see our colleges on your screen here. Now, we are most well known for the Granger College of Engineering and the Geese College of Business. They're the number six and the number 19 ranked program of their kind, respectively. But you can rest assured that whatever it is you choose to study at Illinois, your degree is gonna be highly respected. Again, because we're gonna prepare you. Now, we have a lot of hidden gems on our campus in addition to those top ranked programs. For example, our School of Information Sciences has the number one graduate level program of its kind. And so this year is the first year that we're offering undergraduate coursework. It's a school that we are really popular, we're really proud of and that's becoming more and more popular amongst our student body. But even if you haven't had your entire life figured out and you are still deciding what your exact program is gonna be or what's right for you, you're among good company still. A quarter of our students come in every year undecided in our Division of General Studies. That gives you an additional two years to work with an academic advisor who gets, to know, who gets to know you personally and has you exploring opportunities inside and again outside of the classroom as well to find out what the right path for you is. Because we again want you to feel supported on our campus. Now beyond that, our students are involved. About 70% of our students take place in internships during their time on campus. And almost 70% of our students, again, participate in research on our campus. We have a world-renowned career center, and we are a tier one research university, meaning our faculty isn't just paid to come in and teach you the latest thing. They're still pushing the boundaries of their field. They're still engaged, and they are help fostering those new and better solutions that the world, that the world recognizes. Also, another really big department on our campus, on our campus is study abroad. We offer more than 400 trips in a traditional year, going to more than 60 countries. Now, similarly to some of my colleagues, our study abroad programs have been scaled back, but we have a department that is consistently working to make sure that once it's safe to do so, we offer those opportunities to you to enhance your education. Now, with that being said, those are some of the primary opportunities that our students take part in, but we have endless opportunities on our campus. There are more than 1,800, you heard me right, 1,800 student organizations on our campus that are registered with our RSO department. But in addition to all of that, we want to give you the genuine college atmosphere. The Champaign-Urbana community is supportive and it's engaging of the community, and that goes to help foster that family environment I talked about. We also offer Division I athletics. Our programs are some of the best in the country. The Big Ten is one of the highest levels of competition in the country. We're really proud of all of our programs. This year, we also are especially proud of our men's basketball program, which ended the regular season as the number two ranked team in the country. Now, all of those opportunities inside the classroom, outside the classroom, social, educational, whatever your thing is, we offer it in spades and we offer you unmatched success because employers know that you're going to be prepared in all walks of life after graduation. About 10,000 unique employers come to recruit Illinois students every year. And you can see that the kinds of jobs our students are getting are impressive. But although you see an impressive listing of employers, we do wanna foster your individual goals. So if you want to run your own startup or whatever your career goals are or educational goals are after Illinois, we help make sure that they're what's going to fit you best. Now I wanna take a little bit of time to talk about our application process too, to show you exactly what we're going to look for. We review apps holistically, meaning we're looking for more than just your academic performance, although that is the foundation of what we're going to look at. We don't ask you to send us an official transcript or an official test score when you apply. You self-report all of that information, and we take a look really individually at the classes that you've taken, the grades you've gotten in those classes, and the level of rigor or challenge in your classes. So if your school offers AP or IB or dual enrollment courses and you've taken those, that lays a strong foundation, as long as you do well in those courses. Now, this past year, we were optional. You didn't have to send us an ACT or an SAT. And it's just been announced that we actually are going to be test optional for an additional two years. And then, you know, things after that are going to be pending. Um, so you can select whether you want us to consider your AC ACT and SAT um, or whether you don't. Whatever that decision is, it's going to be final. So we do encourage you to, to think carefully when you make that decision. But we also want to see who you are in terms of fit for the program that you're applying for. So understanding what you're applying for and what that major entails and how we teach that at Illinois is pivotal. Your extracurricular activities, your essay, go a long way into showing us exactly who you are and how you fit the program that you've applied for. So that's a really short preview. I also want to encourage you that we are genuinely here to help. You can reach the admissions office by phone, by email, on our website, by social media. 
again, I'm Keena Griffin. I'm you guys' direct admissions counselor. So if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or send us an email. Ask for Keena, and we will be more than happy to help. And I'll be more than happy to help personally. Thank you all, and enjoy the rest of your night. All right. Thank you to University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And next up, we have University of Cincinnati. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Sloan from University of Cincinnati. Um, I am, as you've heard um, some people say, regionally based. I am also based in the Chicago area to work with students all over the state of Illinois, but primarily in the Chicagoland area. University of Cincinnati is a large public research one institution. We are located in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is about a five to five and a half hour drive from the Chicago area or a one hour flight. So very easy to get back and forth. We are about um, 25 minutes from the airport. And just to give you context of where we are in Cincinnati, we're about two miles from downtown Cincinnati. One thing I always like to point out is the photo of the campus itself. So hopefully what you can kind of see there is there are no roads through campus. So it's a little bit of a unique setup in that it's a very traditional on-campus experience. You can't drive through the main campus. You can walk pretty much anywhere in about 15 minutes or less. So it creates a very traditional experience for our students in terms of campus life with the city all around them. Um, we do have over 350 different majors and programs for our students to be able to choose from um, and nine undergraduate colleges. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown so you have a little bit of an idea of how much we offer. Our College of Engineering and Applied Science, College of Allied Health Science, College Conservatory of Music, our College of Nursing, which is direct entry as are all of our programs, College of Arts and Sciences, College of Medicine, which does have two undergraduate majors, our Lindner College of Business, College of Design, Architecture, Art, and Planning, and our College of Education, Criminal Justice, and Human Services. So hopefully from that, you know we have a lot to offer our students. Um, in terms of size, we are just over 46,000 students, so we certainly fit the bill of a large school. Our undergraduate population on our main campus is about 27,000 students. If you know one thing about University of Cincinnati, it's that um, experience-based learning is a fundamental part of a Cincinnati education. What that looks like can vary based on your program. So it could be student teaching, it could be clinical rotations, artistic performance, internships, um, it could include study abroad. One that we're very well known for is co-op. Um, co-op is, at least at Cincinnati, it is always a full-time paid working experience. And I won't go into too much about it, but I'd be happy to talk more about it with anyone interested after the session. But on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see what programs we offer that require it and what provide an option for it. But it's a really amazing um, paid working experience that's a part of your educational time with us. And then one other thing I wanna mention in terms of size um, is our average class size. So as a school of our size, we get asked a lot about what can I expect in the classroom in terms of how many people will be there. So just under 4% of our classes have 100 students or more. Nearly 83% of our classes have 50 students or less. So is it possible that you could come and have a large lecture that's a part of your time with us? It's possible, but it certainly won't be the vast majority of your experience. So a lot of students are very happy to hear that. Um, we are a very residential campus. About 83% of our freshmen live right on our main campus in 16 different residence halls. You are welcome to move off campus after freshman year. You are welcome to continue living there, but you're welcome to move into the neighborhood right around our campus as well. Um, we are division one for athletics. We have over 30 club sports, over 500 different student organizations on campus, including over 70 cultural organizations and centers. So there are many, many, many different ways to get involved and find your fit. Um, I've talked a little bit about some of these things, but if you're not overly familiar with the city of Cincinnati, the metro area is just over 2 million people. We actually have the largest number of Fortune 500 companies per capita of anywhere in the US. A lot of people are very surprised to hear that. So a lot of great opportunities for our students in terms of co-op jobs, internships, things like that. Um, we are a top five school in the country for co-ops and internships and some of our unique undergraduate programs you can see listed here. Um, and then as far as the application process, we are a common app school. We do have an application fee. We require your official transcript one letter of recommendation. This is a great time to practice excellent direction following skills. I promise you one is enough at Cincinnati. Um, test scores, we were test optional this year. We will continue to be test optional for most programs next year as well. 
Um, this year, the exceptions to that were our nursing program, early childhood education, and our university honors program. Outside of those three programs, which required a test score, everything else was test optional, and we are truly test optional. We really have no preference one way or the other. That's entirely up to you. Um, I would say stay tuned. Hopefully in the next few weeks here, we should announce if there are any changes to the programs that will be included in that test optional, but most will continue to be. Um, you can see some of our scholarships listed here. I will talk a little bit more about that on the next page. Um, December 1st is our early action deadline. So very straightforward. Um, there is nothing you have to do to be considered for merit scholarship except meet the December 1st early action deadline. So we require all materials are received no later than that date. Hopefully if you are here learning more about us now, um, that won't be a tight deadline for you. But as long as everything is in and received by that date, you will automatically be considered for merit scholarships. Um, this past year, we also did not use test score in consideration for scholarships. So stay tuned on a few more details about that, but I would anticipate much of that will stay the same. We do have a rolling admission deadline, but I tell students all the time, there is no reason to not be considered um, for scholarships if you know that you're interested in UC. So um, I very much appreciate your time tonight. If you have other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and thank you so much. All right, thank you to the University of Cincinnati. And next up we have the University of Northern Iowa. All right, well, let me share my screen. I think I share my screen here and we'll go ahead and start. Good evening, everybody. My name is John Peterson. I'm an admissions counselor here at the University of Northern Iowa. The University of Northern Iowa is founded in Cedar Falls, Iowa, not too far from the uh, from Chicago, about three and a half, four hours. And we are what is called as a mid-major institution. We are around 10,497 students, and we are diversely populated around 46 states in 63 countries. Uh, when you take a look at an opportunity of going to college, you want your opportunity to be as diverse as possible. Here at the University of Northern Iowa, we welcome a diverse and inclusive environment. And you will definitely get that here with 46 states and 63 countries representing our student population. What you'll find here at the University of Northern Iowa is you'll find over 90 majors, 87 minors, and 25 pre-professional programs. Uh, there are many majors across the board. Students change their mind quite a bit, but it's not a problem of changing your mind because we get you into your major classes right off the bat your freshman year. If you want to start in business, you'll get into major specific classes in business your first semester. If you want to change your mind, next semester we'll get you into another set of major specific classes. The biggest thing I want you to pay attention to on this slide is our class size. Our class size is average around 20 to 30 students. And in that class size, your classes are going to be taught by someone that has an advanced degree or has that uh, type of experience that they already have underneath their belt. 99% of our professors on campus that have that experience, that have that advanced degree underneath their belt, they're going to be teaching those key intro classes, those very important classes to really steer the ship of what you want to do in your career after college you are getting someone that has an advanced degree teaching those classes. Teacher assistants and graduate assistants are available, but they will not be the ones teaching those key intro classes. Here at the University of Northern Iowa, those 90 plus majors come with a lot of opportunities for research and a lot of opportunities to partner with international companies abroad. Studying abroad is a very popular thing here on campus. We have semester long programs, year long programs, and a common thing that a lot of our students like to do is uh, study abroad with their capstone course. You're able to study, um, you are able to study a couple weeks at, at a time during winter break or during uh, summer break. So study abroad, it's always an opportunity and gives students that opportunity to build their networking skills as early as their freshman year. Uh, a lot of students are able to get that experience, not just one type of experience, but many experiences within their three or four or five years of being a University of Northern Iowa Panther. 93% uh, of their students are gonna find that type of experience. They might not like their first experience, but that's not a problem because then they will be able to get that top experience that they've learned to like or dislike within their freshman, sophomore year, then their junior, senior year, be able to hone in and get that great experience. And that's a reason why 95% of our grad 
of our grads find success within six months? They ask those tough questions early. They get those answers early and are able to build that rapport, get that relationship with their professors in that small 25 to 30 class uh, size and really hone in on what makes them truly a great candidate for an upcoming job. Every major on campus has a four-year plan of study, and that is found at majors.uni.edu. That lets us know what are you going to be taking in your classes, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Also at majors.uni.edu is you are going to find jobs that each one of our alumni have gotten in each one of those majors. It's not just going to be a general set of jobs you'll find in that specific major, but you'll find out what alumni have gotten in those majors as well. What else you'll find here at the University of Northern Iowa is you'll find an NCAA Division I institution, over 260 clubs and organizations, and 17 sports. We are one of 11 universities in the, in the nation that play football in a dome, and it is free for all students. Club and intramural sports are an option as well, and we have what's called the Gallagher Blue Dorm Performing Arts Center, and one of the state-of-the-art um, auditoriums where our students are able to major in what's called as organ performance. We actually have our own organ on campus. What your next steps are is visit. We want you here on campus right now. We have visits going on and you can get more of those options at admissions.uni.edu slash visit options. We do have options for you to visit with someone virtually where you're able to meet with someone in admissions just like myself but you're also to meet with someone that is an academic advisor or a professor in that specific area. Funding opportunities for our Illinois friends. You're looking around $19,480 for your tuition and fees. That's your sticker price. That's not what you are going to be paying here at the University of Northern Iowa because we automatically give you $5,000 once you are admitted to the University of Northern Iowa. $5,000, and that is renewable up to four years with a 2.5 GPA throughout college. So essentially, 5,000 times four, you're getting one year of tuition free just by being a UNI Panther from outside of I Iowa and also stackable scholarships on top of that. We have scholarships for those that are students of color, and we also have scholarships for those that are a part of an AVID TRIO program as well. Uh, looking at our other scholarships, we do have what's called as a legacy scholarship. So make sure that you let us know if you have a UNI alum. This is me. I'm John Peterson. I am here to help. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll put my info in the chat. All right, thank you to University of Northern Iowa. And next up, we have the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Hello, everyone. My name is Getsali, and I am your admissions counselor for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, I um, am also an alumna, so I'd love to answer any questions that you have in the chat. We are located in the city of Madison, which is the capital of the state of Wisconsin and is about three hours north of you all. Um, the University of Wisconsin-Madison is a large public university that serves over 30,000 undergraduate students from over 120 countries and all 50 states. What makes us unique here at UW-Madison is the Wisconsin idea. The Wisconsin idea states that education should influence people's lives beyond the classroom. So it's really this embodiment of service and academics that's led our students to rank number one in Peace Corps volunteers and number eight nationally in research expenditures. And speaking of academics, we offer 125 undergraduate majors and over 70 certificates. And certificates are pretty similar to what other institutions might call a minor. And all of our majors and certificates are housed within these eight schools and colleges that are listed on the right of your screen. I wanna let you know that both our Wisconsin School of Business and our College of Engineering have direct entry options for freshman applicants. So if you have questions about direct entry, definitely let me know in the chat. And regardless of whatever major you're gonna to choose to study, um, Badgers at UW-Madison have the ability to really personalize their Wisconsin experience. So there's a plethora of things that you can choose to do. 
So just to name a few, about a third of our students study abroad or conduct research abroad. While um, some of our students do research abroad, a large portion of our students also do undergraduate research on our campus, since it's a really great way to live the Wisconsin idea. Um, service is also a great way to live the Wisconsin idea. So we have service learning courses and students can connect with the Mortgage Center for Public Service if they wanna find outside opportunities. Of course, there are co-op opportunities and internship opportunities available to all our students. And for those of you considering living in a uh, residence hall, which is never required for any of our students, um, you might choose to live in a residential learning community. So um, I also wanna point out that first year interest groups are a great way for our freshman applicants to get their foot wet with college coursework while also having built in academic and social supports. Hopefully um, we are interesting to you and you might consider applying. So I wanna talk about our holistic review. Here at UW-Madison through our holistic review, we consider all parts of an applicant while putting particular emphasis on academic excellence. And what that means is that we just hope to see that our students are earning those strong grades in the core classes that they're taking, um, while also progressing to rigor in those core classes. So those honors and, and AP classes are gonna be really important as they help prepare you for college. Um, we also wanna know what you're doing outside the classroom. So your extracurriculars are gonna be something that you should really note on your application. So that can include summer clubs um, or summer programs, clubs, sports, uh, part-time jobs, family or household responsibilities or anything else that you're doing outside the classroom. We also wanna hear about campus and program fit and your essays are gonna play a huge role in answering this question of why Wisconsin. And I'll let you know a little bit more in the next slide. When you're ready to apply, our application opens on August 1st with an early action deadline of uh, November 1st and a regular decision deadline of February 1st. You can apply through the Common App or UW system application. We don't have a preference. Both of, both of them have a $60 fee, but there is a fee waiver available. Regardless of which application you use, you will be asked for your grades and coursework information for all four years of high school. We'll also ask for two different essays. The first essay is gonna vary depending on which application you use, but the second one is gonna be the same. Um, so that second essay is your Why Wisconsin essay. So really take your time answering this question, do some research and have your essays proofread. We'll also ask for one letter of recommendation from an academic source that's usually a teacher or a counselor. And we are test optional through the spring of 2023. So you can choose to submit an ACT or SAT score to us, but you also don't have to. And if you choose to not submit one, your chances of admission are not hurt by that decision. And because we really understand that education or that financing your education can play a huge role in your final decision. Um, we really recommend that if you're able to do so, that you complete the FAFSA as early as possible or as close to the October 1st date as possible. Um, and for students who submit a UW-Madison application, the Wisconsin Scholarship Hub is going to open up to them where you can browse and apply for scholarships. Again, that's as soon as you submit your application and you don't need to wait excuse me, you don't need to wait until you hear back from us about your admission decision and, um, to start applying. Um, so yeah, I'd love to answer any questions that y'all have in the Q&A box. So thank you. All right. Thank you so much to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And that was actually our last presenter for this evening, but we still have a little bit of time left. So I'd like to invite all of our presenters to go ahead and turn their cameras back on so we can answer a question about the process. So could all of you uh, give me a little information on what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and start with Arupe College. Thank you, Andy. Um, one of my um, biggest recommendations, and actually um, I think that John mentioned it earlier, is to visit campus. Um, if you have the opportunity to visit campus, I know that right now, 
um, we're still sort of kind of getting through COVID, but once, um, if you have an opportunity to do it either this summer, or if you have it, an opportunity to do it sometime early in, in the fall, um, you know, there's still time while you're applying, make sure that you visit campus, uh, make sure that you take a look at the classrooms and talk to a student maybe. Um, I always recommend speak to someone that went to that college or that university um, in order to really get a better um, experience in terms of what it's like to be a student at the school. Um, that will allow for you to make a better, um, a more informed decision in terms of whether that is a good fit for you, whether you can see yourself there in the future. I would also advise just going off what uh, Isabel said, definitely get a hold of students. That's the best way to get like the clearest testimony of their experience. But in reality, also utilize us, right? The admissions counselors, we're your direct contact, right? And if you know, like, for example, you're like, I already know this is a school I'm definitely applying to. And if you know right now, reach out to us. That way we can assist you in understanding the process early. So that way you're ahead of deadlines and you know exactly where you're at during that process. Uh, and again, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We literally get paid to help you. So reach out. I'm gonna echo that sentiment. Um, like I would, I would say find somebody. I don't care who it is that can give you the genuine experience of what you're gonna feel on campus. Like we all know that this is a huge decision that you're making for your life. Everybody here wants to help. So whether that's somebody that's at the school, whether that's a student, whether that's somebody that's at your high school, like no matter where you're starting from, everybody needs some support from somewhere. Like I've worked with students that are first generation. I'm first generation. I've worked with students that are well removed from being considered first generation. But no matter where you're coming from, where you're starting at, everybody's got a place somewhere. You just got to figure out where to find it and which resource is going to be for you. That's what we talk about when we use that kind of subjective term fit, or you'll know it when you see it. Just kind of you get that environment, you get that feel of like, hey, this is where I'm supposed to be because this is what the experience is going to be. I would say try to have a little fun with this process. It is a big decision, but you have so many great choices and you're getting to hear from a lot of them just over the course of the three hours here tonight. This is exciting and it, it you know, it's a big decision, but it's a fun thing to get to do and to get to be a part of and get to explore um, in a way that you probably haven't had the opportunity to do yet. So I know that there's a lot of pressure around it, but try hard to, to see some of the fun of this process and the exciting things that you get to do as part of it, especially as it's looking like more of this process for um, juniors is going to get to look a little bit more traditional, which is exciting. Yeah, go, going off what, what she said, have fun with the process but um, don't settle. Don't, don't settle. Ask as many questions as possible. Uh, visit early. Uh, if we're a junior or, or even a senior right right now, uh, ask as many questions as possible and uh, be pick picky because um, we're here for a re reason. We want to answer your questions as specific as they might be. And um, getting a hold of that uh, uh, specific student is going to change your answer too. So keep your mind open. Keep your mind open. Uh, learn uh, that there could be found majors on campus. Uh, some majors that you may have an idea that exists now, but when you actually get on campus, if you change your mind, you're totally fine. You're definitely going to be finding things that you thought never even existed. And who knows, there's probably majors out there right now that haven't even been existed yet that will start uh, coming up here in the next couple of years. So keep your mind open, have fun, ask questions. Yeah, I was also going to suggest that you really take advantage of the fact that we offer so many virtual opportunities. Um, this way you can explore a wide range of colleges. Um, without actually having to travel. And you can also use that as a way to eliminate some options out of your uh, probably very extensive list. Great, thank you all so much for that advice. A lot of really, really good advice there. And that has actually taken us right to the end of the session. So uh, I do wanna thank all of our presenters tonight for sharing information about their schools. Uh, I also wanna thank all of you for joining us too. Um, just so you know, after, when you close this window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey that will appear on your screen. Uh, please provide any feedback that you can on this session. Uh, also, like I mentioned earlier, this is just one of many different sessions that are being hosted. There is one more session after this tonight, so please be sure to sign up for that. Uh, also, remember that you have other resources here, too, and you can ask your St. Ignatius counselors questions about the college search in the counselor corner tonight. 
And lastly, in about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Ignatius. Thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the fair.